Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today I'm going to be working on my mobility scooter. Uh, if you don't know, I've got problems with my hips. If you want to see the video about it, it's somewhere around here. Uh, not important, just my mobility's rubbish. Um, hopefully won't be for long, but while it's rubbish, I would like to get a mobility scooter up and running so that I can actually get out because that's my biggest problem is not being able to go anywhere anymore. Um, just, you know, walking my kids to and from school, I used to do it all the time, uh, up until about three years ago, and now I've had to stop all of that kind of thing. So if I could get a mobility scooter up and running that would be powerful enough to go there and back, that'd be brilliant, you know, that one less thing to, for Crystal to worry about, you know. This mobility scooter is falling apart. Um, it's relatively new as, as they go, but it is just broken. When I first got it, it didn't move at all. Um, and that was because of the the cables were completely sheared through. I need to um, wire all that up. I need to check the batteries. I think that the batteries are dead. I think that there's no chance for them, but I will try and save them. Um, and just various other things I'd like to clean up. There's, there's duct tape on the motors. I'm a bit concerned by that, so I'll have to have a look and see what that, why that's there, um, and we'll go from there. So I'll show you what it looks like now. I've got it working, but only temporarily, and it will only work if plugged in. Uh, I don't have a um, cable long enough to get me to and from the kids' school, sadly enough. So um, I might have to get the batteries working, but I'll show you what it looks like. I'll show you all the problems I've seen with it, and we can go from there. Okay, so the first problem I found was this. Down from the joystick, this was just in tatters. Look, at it's all ripped and sheared. This is just, I just stuck to these two together very, very quickly um, just to see if it worked at all. And it does work once plugged in. Um, and then it holds a, a, a charge for a very, very short space of time. So it's possibly yeah still got a bit bit of movement in it at the moment but it will just die very very quickly as you will see everything seems to be covered in um gaffer tape or duct tape or duct tape depending on what you want to call it um and it is beaten up really badly like it is scratched and punched and starting to go rusty here and so on so there's a lot of work to do to this but what i'll do is i'll get my minions to take this apart for me and put all the bits that I can look through on the desk. Okay, so this is the battery box and this is the joystick and command thing. Now let's have a look, the command module I wanted to call it. This has been sheared really bad. So I'm gonna have to, I think, cut this section off. Um, I might then add a thicker, like a longer section. Um, what it looks like it's done is where the seat plops down, it looks like this has been caught in it, which is a really clever design problem. So I might see about lengthening this piece of wire just so that I can actually um, then have it so that I can, you know, zip tie it along things so that doesn't happen again. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, I haven't even looked in this, this is quite scary. The fact that it's literally, it's just, yes. Okay, we'll see the batteries look okay, as in physically. They don't look like they've got water on them or anything like that. That is just smashed to pieces. This has been dropped, I think, yeah. It's got brakes all over the place, it's been, it's been dropped. So that could have damaged the batteries, just it being dropped, to be honest. But what I'll do is I'll take these batteries out and I'll get them. Oh, they've been taken out before. There's, uh, let me show you. Can you see where the screw has actually been unscrewed before? But let's get them all out and we'll put them on charge. Yeah, some of these don't even have washers on or anything. So they've just been sort of, yeah, who knows, who cares? Okay, so don't know what to do about this box because there's not very much I can really do about it. It is absolutely destroyed. I obviously can, you know, um, glue all this back down, but it's still gonna look awful. And then we've still gotta come up with a way of closing it properly, and unless I do what was done before and just gaffer tape it all down. But it doesn't look too sexy, does it? 
Right, let's get these charged in. Right, the charger I'm going to use is the one I always use, which is the Maypole um, 8 amp smart charger. And this has brought back to life a few of the batteries that basically wouldn't charge on anything else. Um, it's quite a good charger, from my experiences anyway. It's not a miracle worker, but it does bring back to life more batteries than I would have it perhaps thought it would, you know. This has also got reverse charge um, protection, so if you put them on the wrong way around it doesn't mess anything up, which is nice. Not that I'm the kind of guy who'd do that, but they're down at 10.7, 10.8, and if they start charging straight away, then this charger will charge them. Otherwise, it may have to um, run through its um, fixing its cycle. I get the feeling it's going to need to fix it because it should have gone up to about 14-ish volts. It's slowly getting it up there. What we'll do is we'll leave it to do its thing. Oh, it may end up charging it and I may actually be able to use these batteries rather than having to get some new ones. Um, but we'll see. Right, I'll be back once I know what's going on with this one. And if this one charges then theoretically I should be able to charge that one up hopefully. We'll see. Back in a bit. Right after watching back that segment about the battery charging, I suddenly realised I hadn't sort of made myself clear on what I was doing. Um, do not under any circumstances use a battery charger like that um, for such small batteries um, over a long period of time. With that charger it sort of fixes the batteries and what it does is it fires them with a, um, a huge amount, then a little amount of this is a, a voltage, and a back and forth, back and forth until it hopefully um, fixes the battery doesn't always work and when it does it works well when it doesn't work it fails spectacularly um, so what it what I wanted to do was leave it on for about an hour hour and a half it was more like three hours in the end I completely forgot about it um, and it got too hot um, and then what my plan was is to put a, another battery charger I've got which is designed for the smaller batteries um, which I have since done this is it's all the same day um, and I did exactly the same for the other battery. Now, the reason I've done that is I'm hoping that's given them enough power to then be allowed able to charge on their actual charging station, you know, the, the one that would you plug in to get them to charge um, on the chair. So that's the bit we're gonna do next, to see if it will charge via the chair. And it will also be able to tell us how much charge the batteries have in them. When I've uh, plugged it in before and just plugged it in normally um, to test the batteries initially, it wouldn't go past the first um, sort of bar, the first indicator of charge, even if it was left on overnight. So what I can do now is we'll check it together and we'll see if um, my charging has helped in any way or if they are just absolutely knackered. Okay, I'm gonna wire it up exactly how it was originally. Right, I'll get this put back in the chair and we'll plug it in and see how we get on. Okay, first job then is to turn it on and see if that's done anything. If this is anywhere past the first dot, then it's charged a bit. So that is a very good sign, even though it's obviously not fully, fully charged or anything. So let's see about ch putting it on charge overnight then. Um, it charges just in here, in the handle, which is a bit of a pain. But... We'll leave that charge in overnight and we'll see how we get on in the morning. Right, we are on the next day and we've had sufficient time to charge this. So we'll have a look and see if it's charged. Right, this is the moment of truth. If all the lights light up, it means it's charged and we might have fixed the batteries. If it's back, you know, if it's down here somewhere, then it's they're still broken. So three, two, one. Wow. Okay, so that actually did fix the batteries which I genuinely did not think we were gonna be able to do. Right, I've just finished editing what I'd done up to this point, and I'd come down to start work on the actual joystick. Um, I had still haven't decided, or hadn't decided, what I'm doing with the battery um, case, but I've come to a realization, let me show you. Right, this is the um, broken piece of wire and the joystick, and I was initially just gonna cut it off here. And then I thought, no, no, I will find a wire that I've got that I can then rewire the whole thing. 
the I haven't got any wires um, at all. I've looked everywhere. I've got two, um, just like two strand wires, um, which I could put together and yada yada yada. But it wouldn't look any better than this, really. So I thought, okay, go back to my first plan. Cut here, cut here, splice them all together, make it look beautiful. Um, and then I realised that this is only just long enough for what it needs to do. If I was to cut that off, it would mean that the chair um, seat can't move at all. If you were to start pivoting off to get out to make your life easier, um, you'd rip the thing out. And obviously, if you find it hard to bend anyway, you don't want to unclip the only thing that's getting you around. So I thought, okay, I'll have to go and buy another one of these. They're relatively inexpensive, They're about 12 to 20 pounds, depending on where you get them. So I was a bit bummed out by that. And then I started to think, well, what can I do to the actual battery case? The thing that's holding the batteries in, the thing that's obviously been dropped multiple times. And there's nothing, not, not without epoxying it all in different places, which will then look a bit, a bit pants. I can make it functional, obviously. I can get it to work and I can get it to work well, but I can't sort of make it look any, any good. You know, a bit of gaffer tape on it and a bit of this, that and the other but it would still look as, as rubbish as it did when I first got it. Although I've, it's working now, the batteries are working, which saved me about £100, which is good. The rest of it seems sort of like a waste of time. If I, if I was to put any more energy into doing this, I think I'd just be wasting my time. Plus, I've got about 10 other projects that I'm working on at the moment that are really exciting, and they're at really exciting points in this, and I'd just like to get on with them. So that has... Uh, like swayed me a little bit in the just leave this and buy the bits but it's also because I just can't I can't make it look any better so um, I will leave it there but I've got some really good videos coming out soon um, some ones that a lot of people have been waiting for and I get a lot of um, emails asking for so you know uh, if you haven't already subscribed subscribe now I'd really appreciate it anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon bye for now